Björn Rager, 36 years of age. He works as a driver. Today he has high tech on board, and it's his job to test it. This is the device it's all about. The Draeger Interlock 7000 is an alcohol ignition interlock device. This means if the driver has drunk alcohol, the device will prevent the engine from being started. But will it really work? Is it really impossible to fool the device? How much time and stress is such an ignition interlock going to cost the driver? Well, I can imagine that this device has a lot of drawbacks. If there are any hitches and it keeps blocking my lorry, I won't be able to get my work done. These gentlemen will support Björn in doing the test. Professor Andreas Slemeyer is chairman of the Standardization Committee on Breath Alcohol Analysis. He will observe the test from a scientific vantage point. Alexander Sacinelli is the product manager responsible for the Interlock 7000. He has no doubt that the device is safe, quick and easy to use. After a brief introduction, Björn is asked to blow into the device for the first time. To sum it up, switch on the ignition, blow. That's all. Start the engine as usual and drive safely. All the best. Well, that was quick. And off he goes. The necessity to take measures against drink driving is borne out by current figures from Europe. The Brussels-based European Transport Safety Council has been battling for greater road safety for years. Antonio Avenoso is involved with this topic on a daily basis. At least 5,600 lives could be saved every year if all drivers respected drink driving legislation. It is therefore important that all measures are taken to tackle the scourge of drink driving. First and foremost, at the European Union level, we need a common BAC limit, very low BAC limit, possibly zero. It is also important that technology is used. Alcohol interlocks have proven to be a life-saving technology and it is important that uh, um, they are used in a widespread manner at the European Union. For example, it would be desirable that the European uh, Union legislates on making alcohol interlocks mandatory for commercial transport. Back to Björn Reger, who has reached his first destination. Waiting at the barrier. Documents are being checked. Time is passing. Sometimes we're really pressed for time, and the colleagues behind me in the line want to get on with it too. So if I had to keep blowing all the time, but it really works. Great. Correct. The Interlock 7000 does not need to be operated after each short break. The free start interval has not yet elapsed and Björn is able to set off immediately. At first I thought it was a mobile phone because it looks like one. So far I haven't had to do a lot. Simply get inside, switch on, blow and start driving. After all, it's easy to operate. The time has come for the acid test. To make sure that no one is put at risk, the lorry is driven to a closed off area. Björn is to drink alcohol and will then try to outwit the Interlock 7000. This task does not give Björn particular pleasure, for in everyday life he only very rarely drinks alcohol. Sometime later, the liquor is showing its effect. The alcohol breathalyzer shows 0.31 and Björn is visibly under the influence. Normally I'm not that keen on alcohol. Normally I never drink alcohol like this. Björn has been found to have increased breath alcohol concentration and both men proceed to the lorry where, watched by the eagle-eyed test supervisor, the attempt to start the lorry will take place. The Interlock 7000 does its duty, and the engine cannot be started. It won't start. Yes, Mr. Reger, as you could see, the device found out that you've drunk alcohol and prevented you from starting the engine and moving the vehicle. And this is precisely what it's intended to do. You will not be able to blow into the device again until a certain interval has passed. Then the decision will be taken as to whether you're capable of driving. 
Now, if you like, we can try and find out if you're able to manipulate the device. Björn Reger's first attempt is by means of a commercially available bicycle pump. An adapter made of plasticine is attached to the mouthpiece of the Interlock 7000. Now it's time to pump. But no matter what Björn tries, the result is always the same. The Interlock 7000 detects the manipulation attempt. Björn is trying an electric pump, but also to no avail. Rinsing out his mouth with water before blowing doesn't do the trick either. Nice try, but it didn't work. Björn has had the opportunity to test the Interlock 7000 thoroughly. His conclusion? Well, from the professional driver's point of view, I'm positively surprised by the device. It was quickly ready for use, quick and safe and easy to handle, and it looks rather good to boot. I could well imagine using it in my day-to-day -day work. The Interlock 7000 has passed the test under real-life conditions, and for once, Björn will be chauffeured home today.